Okay, let's talk now about Lagrange multipliers. Consider, consider an optimization problem of the following uh, form. So we have some function f that is going to be our objective function. So it's the one that we want to minimize. And we have a set of constraints. In this case, we are talking about equalities and we have L equalities. So we want to minimize this, but we want also to uh, keep these constraints to be true. Uh, the method of Lagrange multipliers can be used to solve this kind of problem. And the first step is to define a function that is called the Lagrangian. And the Lagrangian is a function that put, uh, puts together the objective function and the constraint functions. And you add to each of the uh, constraint functions, you add one multiplier, one factor which in this case we are calling this uh, beta. So um, our Lagrangian will contain our objective function plus the sum of all our constraints multiply each one of these by a multiplier beta. Okay, so given the Lagrangian, we would uh, then find a set of uh, partial derivatives of the Lagrangian and we will make it we will make them to be zero. So once you have defined or created your Lagrangian you need to compute the partial derivatives with respect of each of the uh, parameters. So um, we will have to compute the derivatives with respect of each of the w's and equalize that to zero and also we will compute the partial derivatives of the Lagrangian with respect of each of the multipliers. Once we have computed these derivatives and make them equal to zero, we solve the equations for W and for beta. Now, consider uh, an optimization problem in which we have, besides the set of equalities, we have a set of uh, inequalities. In this case, we are considering K inequalities. Of this form, some gi, which is uh, less or equal to zero. In this case, our Lagrangian will take this form. We will add more um, multipliers and uh, for the uh, inequalities uh, function. So in this case, we are calling them alpha, alpha i, for each of the i uh, inequalities. And also, we will have our um, multipliers beta for the equality functions. In our uh, support vector machine problem, we will consider only uh, inequalities. So we will have only this part in the, in the Lagrangian together with the objective function. So given the La Lagrangian, the, uh, the next step is to uh, compute the derivatives with respect to the w's and the betas and equalize that uh, to zero and solve for w and for beta and once we have uh, we have the, the right uh, values for w and for beta uh, we solve them for alpha so uh, in Lagrange multipliers there are some conditions that must be met in order to guarantee a solution, an optimal solution to the problem. This uh, set of conditions are uh, known as the karsh contoker conditions or only KKT. And uh, the first two conditions are that the partial derivatives with respect to W and to beta, they should be equal to zero. Uh, the third condition is a very important condition and it says that the product of the alpha uh, and the uh, constraints g's should be all of them should be zero and we will see that this is a very important condition that is going to simplify um, the final classification of our support vector machine another condition is that the evaluation of the constraints the inequality constraints uh, should be also at most uh, uh, zero and that our alphas 
the factors alphas uh, should be zero or larger than zero. So we cannot have uh, negative alphas. Now, previously we posed the following uh, optimization problem for finding the optimal margin classifier in which we wanted to minimize the square of the norm of the uh, parameter vector w subject to m constraints where remember that m is the number of points available in our training set so we will have m constraints of this way where we want this product to be equal or larger than one and uh, to be able to apply uh, Lagrange multipliers we need to change this constraints so we we will uh, get them in a form uh, of g as we saw before so the way to do that is uh, we subtract uh, one from this inequality so we'll have zero to the right and then uh, to inverse the this sign here uh, we simply multiply both sides by minus one and in the end we we get uh, our constraints uh, inequalities in this way, which is the way we need for applying Lagrange multipliers. Now, uh, from the KKT conditions, uh, we saw that this is an important condition, the product of the multiplier alpha uh, and the uh, constraint, the corresponding constraint i should be zero. And we have that alphas also should be larger than zero or equal to zero. But there's a special case where alpha is going to be zero only for the training examples that have functional margin equal to one. And this is true because only those points that have a functional margin equal to one are going to, to evaluate G to be zero. And then if G is zero, then we don't care about what are the values of alpha because it would be multiplied by zero and then this, this is going to be true and that that's that's why we're saying that only in with those points i that are uh, that have a functional margin equal to one alpha could be larger than zero it could be any any positive number and the uh, the ones the points that correspond to the constraint that hold with inequality g equals zero are called the support vectors. So we specified in our optimization problem that this distance should be one, and this is going to be the, the minimum distance from the decision boundary to the closest point to the decision boundary. And what we're saying here is that only those points that are in a, a distance one a distance of one to the decision boundary in both sides in the negative examples and positive examples only those points are going to evaluate g to be zero and if this is zero for those points then alpha could be larger than zero all other points that are here are going to have a, a value different to zero and if g is different to zero to hold this equality, the only possibility is to have alpha to be zero. So this, and this is one of the key points in support vector machines that most of the points in our training set are going to be are going to have an alpha of zero. And we will see that the final way to classify a point in support vector machines uh, considers multiplying the corresponding alpha of the point in the data set. And since most of the points are going to be are going to have an alpha of zero, we can simply ignore them and we can evaluate a new point just considering these vectors here, which are called the support vectors. Okay, um, so we can construct our Lagrangian for our problem. So here is our objective function that we want to minimize. And here are the set of constraints with uh, their corresponding alpha for each of our uh, constraint. And remember, m is the number of points that we have. So um, then we, 
we need to compute the derivatives of this function with respect of w and with respect of uh, b okay so that's the first step to compute the partial derivatives at this point we want to minimize this function so in the first step we're going to uh, compute the derivatives of w and b and equalize that to zero so if you compute the derivative of this lagrangian um, we will get this and uh, you if you compute the derivative of this you get only w the vector w and here if you compute the derivatives with respect of w notice that only this term here will contain alpha y w and x so this could be a com you can compute the derivative with respect of w and you will end up with alpha y x and b and minus one will simply disappear because they don't contain any w so the derivatives with respect, with respect of w is going to be zero so we get this and from here we can uh, equalize that to zero and solve for w and we see that w can be computed by the sum of these products here which are the corresponding multiplier alpha the label of that point and the input vector for that point i okay so this is important this is uh, we're going to use this result later okay now we need to compute the derivative or the partial derivatives with respect of b this is simpler because only this term will contain b and uh, this b is multiplied by alpha and by y here and when you compute that the partial then you you end up only with alpha i and y i for every point in your data set and uh, then of course we need to to make that equal to zero now remember that we uh, computed a, a version of w by computing the sum of, of these products we can replace that in the main uh, Lagrangian so instead of having this w we are going to have here this sum and also here and if you replace that and you uh, develop the the, um, the expression that you will have you will end up with this here but um, remember that we said in the previous slide that this sum is zero so we can even uh, uh, simplify that so we know that this is zero from the, deriv from the partial derivatives with respect of b then we can simply delete this uh, term because this is zero so the final uh, function is this one and this function is a function now only of alphas the multipliers so we have after uh, minimizing the Lagrangian with respect of W and B, we have uh, this function, which is a function of alphas, as I said. And now the next part will consist in maximizing this function. Why we want to maximize that? Because we want to maximize that all the constraints are true. So at this point, we, we need to maximize this function. And uh, we are going to leave this for the next uh, uh, presentation for now uh, just consider uh, that um, this expression here uh, represents only the the dot product of x and and x by, by itself okay so this is a new notation that is introduced here and this is going to be useful when we talk about kernel functions kernel functions is a trick that will allow us to um, send our points to a higher dimensional space where it is easier to solve the classification problem so later on we are going to see how we can maximize this function using an algorithm and we are also going to cover how we can improve uh, this part here using kernel functions so at this point just consider that we are able to find the best w the best b and the best alpha for uh, our problem so this is the, the the optimization problem that we are going to solve later the maximization of these functions subject to this uh, kkt condition that the alpha should be at least uh, zero and that this uh, is true that the product of the alphas and y's 
if you sum all of them for every point it should be zero so suppose that we have already uh, computed w b and alpha um, then uh, to evaluate a new point and to, and to classify the point we need to evaluate this and see if the result is larger than zero but uh, remember that we got an expression where we can compute w as the products the sum of these products here for every point in our data set and um, this expression can be replaced in the model in the original model by doing this and here uh, we can see that we get our dot product of x and we have always this alpha times y times the product plus b and this is a very important expression because if you remember we said that only a few uh, points in our training set uh, are going to have an alpha different to zero okay so very few points in our training set will have an alpha different to zero most of them will have a alpha to be zero so it says uh, this expression tells us that to evaluate a new point to decide if it is positive or negative we just need to evaluate this expression here but we can uh, simplify this expression just by computing the product for every point in our data set where alpha is different to zero and this is one of the uh, important points in support vector machines so the classification of any new point uh, depends only on our support vectors which are usually a few so i hope this uh, is useful thank you and talk to you later guys Bye.